So our next speaker is uh, no stranger to Silicon Valley Health Institute. Anybody doesn't who doesn't know Burn? <laughs> okay. <laughs> he needs yeah. <laughs> there you go. He needs no interact introduction. Uh, Burn has a bachelor's degree in physical education with emphasis in applied kinesiology from San Francisco State. Doctor of chi chiropractic. Uh, from the Los Angeles College of Chiropractic. He's been involved in developing nutritional therapies since 1982. So we know how old he is now. As a result of his therapeutic formulas, he pioneered the research and use of nutrition and free form amino acids for improving athletic performance as a safe alternative to steroids. Dr. Friedlander would discuss the use of cyproheptadine. No? Oh, you talking methylene blue? Okay, anyway, welcome Vern back to our stage. Okay, what I'll talk about is some uh, recent um, research we just finished at Florida AMM University with Elizabeth Mazio on the epigenetic studies and, and you know, on the uh, E. coli study. We just finished a, a major E. coli study, and it was very interesting to see what came out as one of the best agents to kill E. coli. And uh, how many people have an idea what is one of the best agents to kill E. coli? Huh? No, I mean, even botanical, or even a drug, or even uh, antibiotics. No, inside the body, yeah, and outside there. Interesting enough, um, one of them was the number one effect of all these thousands of um, drugs and botanicals that were measured, penicillin was one of the best. Number two, very close behind, was hydrosol silver from Sovereign Silver. Silver actually had one of the best effects. And I'm going to try to get a, a lecture here on silver with one of the doctors, Minkoff, or uh, even uh, Mitch Gaynor, who are doing a lot of work with uh, IV silver. And a uh, matter of fact, Avi Herskowitz in San Francisco has started the IV protocol. It's very exciting what silver does and the results. And that came out number two of all the botanicals and all the drugs so if you have E. coli and you have a, um, a store to go, get what's called Hydrosol Sovereign Silver. And that's the only one that we've seen to really have a great effect. You know, it's interesting. I've been, um, uh, just had a contact with the uh, uh, Buck Institute. Are you familiar with them? Across major, wonderful people there doing the major research. And some of the things we talked about, and also I talked to uh, Tori Hagen a lot, and Joseph Beckman out of uh, Linus Pauling Institute. And Joseph Beckman is doing some exciting work on uh, ALS and a molecule that's called uh, copper and how to increase copper into the uh, mutated gene. And he's doing a, amazing work with um, animals, now with humans, showing that it extends their lifespan a little longer. So you want to look at Joseph Beckman's work. If you can't find it, don't worry. Uh, the other thing we, we've been, okay, what, just look at any of these NAD ones, that's fine. Yeah, just any of those. Because uh, Rob didn't finish the new PowerPoint presentation we have, but I remember some of the things we uh, want to discuss. So in the, we'll talk about some other things on cancer with methylene blue and some of the exciting work that's going on with that. And I think um, Robert Rowan is doing some work with that. I shared a lot of information with him. Um, and hopefully Len will start doing that, saturating the person with methylene blue. And you want to really saturate them first, maybe a few days before they come and get a treatment so that their bloodstream is fully, you know, uh, has a lot of methylene blue because what it does, it goes right into the uh, cytochrome oxidase enzyme and works on the complex four right away. So when you direct the, uh, the methylene blue in that article, which I read about the 785 
nan nanometer wavelength was very effective for methylene blue in cancer research. There's a study that's going on that Len knows about, and he's using uh, 785 as the highest absorption rate for methylene blue in cancer research. So that's a very exciting area. The other thing I've seen with methylene blue that's been very effective is a friend of mine is a medical doctor. His father had um, Parkinson's, and he was worried about it. So he started on the protocol of methylene blue, and within a few days saw immediate results. Um, I took it for several weeks, and what I can tell you is that you do have a lot of energy, but you also get ready to go to the bathroom. There's something about the gastro intestinal walls get stimulated really good. So if you want a natural detoxification, it works. I've, I've, I've tried that myself. And so I had to stop with that, but you don't need much. You, ne you don't need much of methylene blue in the treatment. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, you don't need much of that. And there's a lot of excitement. There's a new paper that just came out from University of Maryland. Have you seen on methylene blue and progera? Progera is a protein mark uh, that's it's a genetic damage, uh, protein that is damaged, mutated, and causes aging very rapidly in kids and young people. And the only thing that they found that stopped this protein, this aging protein, was methylene blue. It was University of Maryland. You can look it up. I forwarded that to you, remember? Susan, did you see it? I forward to Rob, I forward to everybody. Uh, I think Len too. So you may want to see that. It's very interesting how it was the only mo uh, molecule that actually stops the progerian uh, uh, protein in aging. So it has a tremendous benefit in longevity potentials in, in, in the future. And it's very easy to, you know, and you don't want to take too much of it. As a matter of fact, uh, the blog, there's a lot of good blogs out there. And Ray Pede really wrote a wonderful paper on, uh, on on methylene blue. We talk about it a lot because it does have an effect on suppressing, and I hate to tell you, it does suppress nitric oxide, and you gotta understand what nitric oxide does. In Elizabeth's study, it actually stimulates um, uh, the angiogenesis of blood flow to the cancer cells, so you don't wanna increase that. And NO stops, uh, when you have too much NOS, it releases too much blood flow to the cancer cells, so you wanna inhibit it. And one of the things that is exciting about methylene blue, it has an, uh, suppresses nitric oxide and raises complex four, and that's why you see the results in that. And there's now related to uh, many genetic expressions. The other thing we found uh, in the research with Elizabeth is that epigenetics is a big factor and HDOC inhibitor is a big factor. And so which one do, let's see. Okay, so you can see uh, inflammation, NAD, methylene blue. Another area that we're looking at, inflammation is a big factor, chronic inflammation. All the research that's going on all over the world, and I spoke with Garante out of uh, Harvard, everybody, the biggest thing they're all looking at is how to raise the NAD plus levels, the oxidative state of the mitochondria that produces ATP and, and CO2. That is the number one thing. They're coming out with a, 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 a pharmaceutical company that is going to sell you a molecule, a number of molecules that now raises NAD levels dramatically. And one of them is niogen. Have you heard of niogen, NR? You heard of that, right? That's a big thing in Chromadex. It's a company called Chromadex. And niogen is the biggest thing now in the industry, in the health food industry, life extension, and everybody's gonna come out. It is a nicotinic deribose molecule made from milk. And it raises NAD levels, which is very important because NAD is what makes the mitochondria work. When you have any kind of oxidative damage, inflammation, and you, your body wants to adapt to it and responds to stress. And if you don't immediately bring back the energy to the body, to the cell, to the organ, you have aging and disease. The mitochondria is involved in everything with the immune system, the repair mechanism, everything, inflammation. And one of the problems also that is now is autophagy, 
is how to get rid of junk, proteins that are damaged. And one of the areas that gets damaged very easily is the mitochondria because it's the active area of energy producing. It produces a lot of ROS. And when you have a lot of ROS, you have to clean that out. You've got to remove that. You've got to bring back the redu uh, reduced state back to the oxidative state. So everybody is getting into autophagy, a mechanism of removing junk from the body. How to get rid of your own junk, your own misfolding proteins, unfolded proteins. This is a big area. Anna Marie Cuervo out of Einstein University, an MD, did a lot of research with animals showing that if you do intermittent fasting, like you fast for 12 to 14 hours, and then next, uh, she did that with uh, animals and found that liver regeneration occur. And we did, we seen that with uh, human studies as well. And the area of longevity has always been caloric restriction diet. Has anybody ever done a caloric restriction diet here? It's not easy. It's very hard. I worked with Roy Wolford at UCLA. I was one of his guinea pigs in caloric restriction, uh, restriction diet. And it's not easy because you have to monitor your intake of food, and that means your uh, uh, other parts of your body, your hormones, your libido may not be working as right, and it affects your thyroid. Well, the latest research all over the, United, uh, the world is now that you can do the same thing by not rest restricting your diet or your caloric intake, but restricting certain things in your diet. Number one, is eliminating polyunsaturated oils because you cause a lot of heavy, uh, damage to proteins and cell membranes. And, line, and, and who's doing a lot of work with that? Both um, the uh, Buck Institute is doing a lot of work on that. And they also recently showed that if you reduce cadmium, arsenic, and iron, iron, if you reduce your iron intake, and you, because iron causes oxidative damage, but it causes uh, aggregated protein, meaning like, you know, misfolding protein, it damages the protein and causes stiffness. So iron is a big factor. They now show that animals that they reduce iron, Linus, uh, the Buck Institute showed that it's e equal to caloric restriction diet. Same results. Can you imagine that? If you look at many other studies like Richard Miller, who's an MD, PhD, by restricting amino acids, and Ray Pete has done that since the 1990s and earlier, shown that methionine, cysteine, and tryptophan, especially tryptophan, which is a mediator for mTOR pathways, which is a component for cancer. And Miller showed that by reducing in animals the tryptophan levels, it was equal to caloric restriction diet. There was no oxidative damage, no misfolding damage, less protein aggregation, kidney, uh, less kidney damage, liver damage, and mitochondrial function and thyroid function was increased. So that's another area. So you can see that you can do it without really restricting your calories by watching your iron intake, heavy metals like cadmium and ar arsenic, reducing the inflammatory proteins like tryptophan, methionine, cysteine, even though methionine is important in the epigenetic studies that Elizabeth just finished, and I'll tell you what came out of that, where you can control gene expression. What genes go on, what genes go off. Because your body is made out of all these genes. It switches that I, if I turn the light off, we're in the dark. We can't see each other. And I ask you to stand up and walk around. You might hit each other. You won't know who's in front of you. The same thing the body does itself. It, turns, uh, it knows how to turn the uh, genes and switches on and off. And in cancer, uh, there's many switches that you don't want to turn off that monitor you know, the balance of proper division, cell division. And if it sees damage in the cell division, it knows how to uh, stop it before it goes through normal cycle. So there's a couple areas I'll teach you on that that we just finished doing research that uh, genus expression is controlled by Zinc. Folate was the biggest one. Folate had the biggest profound effect on gene expression done. Uh, B1 was also a big one. Uh, B6, 
Uh, choline. Choline was a major one. Betaine, B-E-T-A-I-N-E -E is another one, you know, that had a lot of, uh, you know, effect on the genes. The amino acid lysine. Interesting about the amino acid lysine and proline, there's a study now going on, and you can look, Google it. it set, uh, they did it on C. elegans. C. elegans are worms that they monitor to see what works for longevity and doesn't. That's how they all do longevity study. At, the univers at UCSF, they did that with, um, what's that woman, Claire? Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of her name now. She did a lot of C. elegans studies. They found that of all the amino acids that had the most profound anti-aging mechanisms on C. elegans that prevented aggregation, uh, oxidative damage, mitochondrial damage, DNA gene damage, was lysine, number one. And that's what's found in collagen. That's why collagen is so important. The second molecule was proline. And then they found that um, uh, in the uh, gene expression studies that they just finished, choline, betaine, methionine in small levels, but you have to know how to control it because you have hypermethylation and undermethylation, which controls gene expression and DNA molecules. And the way to control that, you want to have a good thyroid. If you don't have a good thyroid function, you can alter your, uh, your um, methylation groups. And that can cause gene expression problems. That can cause uh, hypermethylation can be part of the uh, cancer-causing areas, too. And I talked to Richard Cunyon about that. So you need to monitor your hypermethylation and hypomethylation. It's so important. And how you do that? is by raising oxidative uh, state of your cell, NAD. That's why NAD is so important. The molecule NAD controls everything that goes on in our body. And autophagy is so important to remove the junk before it causes damage to the DNA. See, the NAD molecule also is required against oxidative damage to the DNA. It helps to repair that. But when you have a greater degree of uh, oxidative damage or mitochondrial damage or genetic damage or gene damage, NAD is utilized. It's utilized. And that's why we're under-functioning in, in NAD levels. That's why fatigue is the number one problem. Recovery from uh, immune function is down. So we found that is important. All the H-STOC inhibitors were very powerful both in gene expression not as much as the nutritional protocol that I gave you, the B1, the zinc, the folate. Um, magnesium was in there, but not as high, but it's essential. We found that in there. So the other thing is, the other study we just finished, and we st uh, we're, we're organizing a, a, um, the, a Florida AMM University College of Pharmacy has been asked by a number of major companies, pharmaceutical companies, to come up and put together a supplemental program that deals with all these things. And I'm one of the board members now with uh, Vince, and also Vince, who was going to be lecturing here. And what it is, it's called Histone Labs. Histone Labs is under the, uh, the direction of the university and the research that's behind it. So for instance, if you have cancer, it's not one thing that's going to handle cancer. It's many things that's going to handle cancer. One of the things we found that will help in cancer, we did, uh, Elizabeth did two, uh, since 2000, and 2001, 2002, she did screening of botanicals and compounds and drugs that have anti-mitotic function. That means stopping cell division right there. Cancer cells dividing improperly. There were thousands and thousands of molecules she discovered. Only a half a dozen to a dozen of them had any profound effect on stopping cancer without causing toxicity. So what we did is we pulled out a group of five, six from that category. We put them down here. Now she did an anti-proliferating uh, study on thousands and thousands of drugs and botanicals. And what it does is proliferation of the cancer cells. Once it grows, it spreads. The problem is you got stem cells. They're the worst. 
when you do surgery and you leave a microscopic tissue in the blood, that microscopic uh, uh, tissue has one little molecule of that cancer stem cell, it grows even larger and goes even worse. So we found anti-proliferating molecules, botanicals, that stop proliferation of cells. So we took the best five or six of those and put them down into one dish. Then we found anti-inflammatory mechanisms. She studied thousands of anti-inflammatories and found that really a few had really profound effect on handling inflammation. But there's many forms of inflammation. You got T2, T1 inflammation, and you don't want to increase one and decrease the other one. You want to control them. They're bound. So ashawanda is good for one thing, but if you have the wrong inflammation, it enhances the other one, the T2. So ashawanda was very high, and so was boswella, and so was feverfew, and so was a number of other ones. Uh, ter you know, the one that it keeps blowing away is curcumin, that you hear so much about. Curcumin was not even in the top 10 in any of her list. So it doesn't have that effect that people think it does. And I know people that take curcumin and turmeric like crazy, and they think it's going to cure the cancer. I know Dr. Joel out of Texas just finished a big paper on cancer and, and turmeric and curcumin. She didn't find that at all, and she retested and retested. So what you do is you take the anti-mitotic, anti-proliferating, uh, and anti-inflammatory, you put them all together, you have a single nutritional approach to dealing with every known condition. Now, not only that, we finished an immune study. What really works on immunity and what enhances immunity besides vitamin D, vitamin D, vitamin A, zinc is very powerful, and echinacea is extremely good. And I'll tell you that came out high on everything we did. You want to know? Anybody guess? What kind of tea is very popular right now? What kind of component in green tea is very popular? EGCG came out solidly strong as an HDOC inhibitor, antimitotic, anti-proliferating, uh, anti-inflammatory. Not in the, t uh, in the bottom, but it was in that category that came out really high. Exciting, that green tea. But that compound, AG EGCG, and I've been using Tevigo. Tevigo is, is, is the most powerful EGCG on the planet. It's 99%. It's developed by a Swiss company called DSW, or DSM, sorry, DSM is the company. So now you have a molecule that works, okay? Now HDOC inhibitors are in there, and you have a proliferating group of nutrients that histone labs will eventually come out under the criteria designed by the university. And we talked about that, Len, about how you want to approach cancer one day with all these molecules that Elizabeth and Saul and, my, and myself was spending a lot of time in developing. And that's going to happen soon. Another area that is really a major component that we really have to, we, we're looking at another anti-aging molecule that's very important in the research end, and not only NAD, not only autophagy uh, getting, but another thing is leaky gut. That's the biggest area of lipopolysaccharides and all that is the endotoxins in our gut that c contribute to everything, everything. And one of the best ways to prevent that is simple. You know what it is? Raw carrots, because in nature they, they have all the natural nutrients in nature, but they also have the ability to protect themselves against toxins. Did you know that? Any plant that has a natural ability to protect itself against bacteria, virus, fun, is really important. And that's why methyl jasminate, when I told you a long time ago, is a natural plant that protects itself against the environment and toxins. And that's why methyl jasmine is very powerful. Carrots, eating raw carrot salad every day has the greatest protection. Number two, bamboos. Bamboo shoots, cooking them, has 
the great, uh, another great protection against endotoxins. And guess what the third one? No, I told you. There's a molecule disaccharide called, it comes from mushrooms. Your brother knows, because he has a product that they made a long time called Trehalose, uh, T-R-E-H-A-L-O-S-E. It's a molecule that's uh, found in mushrooms, but mushrooms itself have great ability. If you, if you gotta boil them, you gotta get rid of that toxin in the, in the mushroom. You gotta boil it and it smells terrible when you boil them. But if you eat them every day, it has the greatest protection against endotoxins and leaky gut and creating that whole thing. So mushrooms, bamboo, and um, that's why I asked for all those things at dinner and they can't even figure that out. It works, it's a wonderful meal to have on a daily basis. And then you gotta understand that leaky gut syndrome is a big problem because of all the foods and toxins and heavy metals and chemicals and the inflammation. And that's why you know having lysine and collagen is very important because it protects the barrier. Collagen protects the barrier of, of the cell membranes. The arteries, one thing I learned from uh, Linus Pauling before he passed away with prostate cancer was his student was a patient of mine and his student was the guy that really did 99% of all Linus Pauling's work. He was the guy in the laboratory, brilliant as they come, figuring out everything and then he reported back to Linus and gave him all the information. And one of the things I learned was that the Teflon, uh, the artery linings and the, and the cell membranes are all made out of collagen, lysine, proline and vitamin C. That's why it's so important to have those three molecules, vitamin C, lysine, proline, and glycine and alanine are also important. The, uh, the bones are all made out of collagen. Without collagen, they can't bind the calcium together. It's very important. And doing exercise when you take collagen with the, um, you know, any kind of uh, squatting or jumping up and down or vibrational uh, plates are fantastic. You need to do all those things, and it's important. Um, we did a study with MMA uh, cage fighters. We talked about it. And they go through extreme measures of serious injuries, okay? And the guy who is working with us is a film producer and a film person who just did John Gray on, on, uh, on he recorded him. And He's been working with these martial arts and the trainers, and they go through. So he started giving them my high performance coconut milk, collagen, and, and Sherry takes that, and a lot of people. And he gave them collagen. The, the results were amazingly incredible. Recovery, less trauma, less pain, less inflammation, and their recovery time was even faster. Their performance was even increased to the point that I worked with a very famous coach up in Seattle, who I don't want to mention because I signed a non-disclosure with these guys, but they did win a Super Bowl using that combination. Okay, so you can understand how much importance nutrition is. Eating anti-inflammatory foods like collagen, which is one of the very few proteins, and I learned that a long time ago from Ray Pete really about the non-inflammatory proteins like collagen the, because they're devoid of cysteine, methionine, and tryptophan. You need some tryptophan, but you don't need it over 100 milligrams a day. And that's just fine in the body. Miller did a lot of research on that. There's about six other pa uh, doctors, Lopez and three other people besides him did a whole study on methionine and cysteine and tryptophan study on caloric restriction diets and all that, and they reported back. So it's important to understand. Um, not only uh, it helps, but collagen's the only protein that repairs ligaments and tendons. Tell me about another protein or molecule that repairs tendons and ligaments. None. That's another thing I learned from a, a, a brilliant scientist who was the R&D expert at uh, Knox Gelatin. So we, we used it with the, uh, uh, with the Raiders, Rams, Lakers in the 80s using Knox Gelatin. That's how I got into it. The orthopedic doctor for, uh, who I trained under with, um, for the Raiders, 
He recovered totally from a spinal injury, playing uh, uh, college football, high school foot, and he was, um, and he recovered totally by taking ox gelatin, vitamin C and calcium, and vitamin D three times a day. This was in the 80s when he was doing this, and early 80s, late 70s. So it's important to understand that we, un we now know the components that helped control aging and chronic illness and can support healing and recovery is by maintaining the oxidative state of our body, bringing back our meta uh, meta uh, me metabolic rate and bringing back the thyroid, which is so important. I think the thyroid uh, has to be always measured. And most doctors, like I said, don't measure thyroid correctly. They don't measure the TSH correctly, the antibodies correctly. They think you're in the norm. You're not in the norm. So to do a, a, a body term, a temperature measurement. You can do that under the arm. And you can see every morning before you get out of bed, what is your body temperature? If it's below 98, then you have thyroid issues. And you need thyroid. And, and you need vitamin A, vitamin D, and you need a lot of protein. Now, it doesn't have to be eating meat all the time. You can have eggs, because I think eggs and getting free range or uh, pasture raised eggs is one of the best foods in the world. Shrimp, non-inflammatory proteins like shrimp. Eating the dark part of the meat, uh, like the thighs, or the, actually the drumsticks, have the less amount of these tryptophan methionine molecules. So they don't uh, suppress mitochondrial function. So you want to eat that kind. You want to eat the part of the meat that has the fat. The more the leaner the meat is, like breasts, they, they have the higher inflammatory proteins in there. And you don't want to eat those. You want to eat less of that. Eating, um, you know, uh, another thing that's very interesting, there's a new uh, romaine coming out by uh, Rutgers University. Have you heard about that? Okay, it's higher than any blueberry. It has higher antioxidants blueberry. It's a, a now called the purple romaine. It's a phenomenal product. It was just measured by Rutgers University, uh, and they, they produce the seed that is sold by a company called Coastline Fa uh, Family out of, uh, you know, what's that area where they, all the growers are? Watson, that whole area. You should look into that. Okay, we're going to close. Any questions? Uh, and then I think I covered pretty much what I needed to. And um, that's okay. it. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll call the, bo uh, the panel back up. And, we'll do a quick and then we'll open the floor to any questions that anybody has on any of the topics that they've heard tonight. Yeah. Okay. Let's give Bern a hand. <laughs> How can I get in touch with you? Do you have a business card? I'm not in business. You're not? Oh, that's, uh, that's a shame. <laughs> I really, you know, I, I um, teach now. I don't really do much more than that, but I'll be glad to answer anything. And just go into my website, DRB, David Robert Boyd B period, Friedlander, spelling of my last name, F-R-I-E-D-L-A-N-D-E-R, the number 10 at gmail.com. So it's DRB, period, Friedlander, 10 at gmail.com. Yeah, and that's it. You know, you can reach me that way, and I'll be glad to answer anything you want. And you can go on my website. It's called Dr. Byrne, drburnfreelander.com and you can see what I'm doing there as well. If I had one more minute, I would have explained something about probiotics that are really important and, uh, okay. Big thing in probiotics says minute, is 10, so homo, watch it. look at heterofermenter probiotics, meaning not only they produce lactic acid, but they produce acetic acid, ethanol, and CO2. Heterofermenters are more biologically effective for you in chronic diseases or inflammatory conditions, then your uh, homo fermenters, things like that. So the probiotics I'm working on are all going to be hero fermenters, predominantly not producing that much lactic acid because lactic acid is a criteria for cancer cells to grow and you don't want that. And there's a lot of research eventually going to come out on that. 
All right. Any other questions? Bill, you have another question? I have a question on the devices here. Where are they at as far as like, um, you know, a production type thing or are you guys getting it out on the market? How much do they cost? Um, um, we, uh, we are, we do have them on the market. They've just come out. Uh, the uh, the website is balesphotonics.com. You can go to that. Uh, they cost. Uh, we have uh, several different models. This is the professional model, uh, which is for healthcare providers. Uh, many times, uh, when patients have uh, chronic problems, uh, that one or two treatments, uh, you know, they, they have a continuing. They might be helped but then the condition comes back after a couple of weeks or whatever. We have another model that doesn't have any bells and whistles. It doesn't have any of these knobs, but it has uh, blue light and infrared light, and we sell that for, uh, I think, $2,200 for home use. And uh, But we recommend highly that uh, the doctor does a workup first and helps the patient before we uh, we sell it to them. Uh, we uh, also have a, uh, a program that people can rent to own, and uh, if they want to rent it, they can rent it for a month or uh, and try it out, or and then that rental will go to the purchase price. We try to make it really easy for the patients because they're the ones that really need help, a lot of them, you know with chronic problems. So I think I heard you mention something about not having protocols. So what, how, what kind of general protocols are there? Or what do you do? Well, uh, uh, Dr. Saputo and other people that have uh, the thermal imager uh, have pretty well established uh, protocols. I learned what I learned from working with neurologists and looking at uh, following the dermatone, thermatone distributions. Also, uh, uh, looking at uh, the myofascial uh, pain books by Simmons and uh, Travell. Those are still available and they're wonderful. You can use those, uh, those points to treat and you don't need the cold spray or needles or anything. So for the myofascial stuff, and you know, a lot of people have myofascial pain, so that's great. Has everybody seen how this device kind of works at all, or did they get a look at it, how it works? I'll Do be happy to, to uh, turn it on. Uh, one person was here, said he had a neuropathy. We could, if he wants to treat his feet, he can, and then see if he can feel his feet when he walks. So uh, I have it here. It's you want to give it a try? <laughs> How long does it take? Oh, oh five minutes till okay. now. Yeah, we'll treat. We'll try that on the side. Any, what? Any other? Uh, yeah. Any other questions for the panel? Okay. Hi, I've come across a product called uh, Restore, developed by. Is it good? <laughs> so I was wondering um, if you have, have heard of it and what's your opinion about it? Uh, Zach Bush is an endocrinologist, MD. Um, Gary Gordon loves it. Um, Avi Herskowitz is using it. Um, what it does, it restores the body, uh, the gut. The, uh, and I think what I understand from talking to him, and I met him a year ago when he just started the company, but I hear nothing but great reviews from people. Uh, absolutely incredible. Matter of fact, I had an attorney from Washington who had a condition I've never seen in my life all over the body. It was uh, gross. I've never seen it in my life. So I told her to do Restore. Go on. I didn't sell it. I told her how to do it. I got her on a P, uh, I got her on apple cider vinegar, bacon soda, niacinamide to raise NAD levels, and certain Bs, completely eradicated, completely eradicated. And doctors tried for six months using antibiotics to get rid of it, and nothing worked. 
It's a lignite. It's based on lignite. And how many of you are familiar with um, what's Willard's water? Anybody ever use? You know Willard's water, right? It's, it's lignites, right? There's something to surfactants and oxygen. And I think something else he does that nobody uh, really understands, and I think I, I questioned him about it, it's vulvic acid. And vulvic acid helps with assimilation, absorption of everything, and it also has minerals there. So it seems that lignite and the fulvic acid combination, he won't tell you that, but I think that's what it is. You know, because I use Willard water amazingly well with uh, a lot of people. Back in the 80s, 90s, you know, when I first learned about it. So, but I'm gonna tell you, Restore is amazing, amazing. Any other questions? Come on, get some questions. Got a whole Make panel up something. Up here. Make up a disease. <laughs> I don't care. Make up something. Oh, hold on. She beat you to I it. I have a question. Uh, uh, lysine versus arginine. I guess they're a mirror image, and they use uh, the the arginine a lot of times uh, to clear out the arteries. You know, the deposits in the arteries. What do you think of that? You got to read Ray Pete's recent article on nitric oxide. It's all about Gilbert Ling. And Gilbert Ling is a cell physiologist, genius. The MRI was the, invented by Raymond Domanian based on Ray, uh, Gilbert Ling's cell physiology. And in there, it talks about nitric oxide, too much of it, displacing the stabilization of the cell the water and the protein has to be maintained. There's a friend of mine who's an MD who promoted arginine to everyone. And a lot of these people started coming to me because they were getting really bad results on their condition. They, they started out really well and then the arginine situation got worse and worse. And one of the things in sports medicine, one of the things I developed was lysine and arginine complex because arginine stimulates viruses, so you got to be careful with that. If you have the herpes virus, it will stimulate it. So in order to knock out the herpes virus, you have to have lysine. And I learned that in the 80s when I was working with the athletes that I had to use lysine in higher ratios than arginine Yet I wanted the uh, arginine for other factors. And then I cut it off and I use alpha ketoglutarate. And alpha ketoglutarate in the future is going to be a major, wonderful molecule that has tremendous benefits for mitochondrial function and also reversing a lot of glycation and other things. And there's a scientific paper coming out on alpha ketoglutarate. I personally don't use anything with arginine. Every time I eat foods with arginine, I get like a herpes uh, breakout, it, and, I, and, and it just happens. But Pender has, was using a lot of arginine, and one of his patients was his manager, and the manager got very ill. And so I showed you, I forwarded you a hundred different pay, uh, things on nitric oxide and cancer. There's a whole shift on blocking nitric oxide and cancer. It's an interesting story. And there's fact to what you're saying, in my opinion. But you've got to be careful about nitric oxide, but it's your buddy, not your enemy, depending on how you do it. Because as I was saying earlier, the hemoglobin molecule carries, or the hemoglobin molecule carries three other molecules, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and arginine, and, and excuse me, and uh, nitric oxide. And, and you can't deliver oxygen to your cells without having a release locally of that. You've got to have some nitric oxide there. Well, you can have large or small amounts, but, it but you're going to have a different. Here's the problem. Cytochrome C oxidase is the enzyme in the mitochondria that transports oxygen into the mitochondria so that it can make energy, ATP. That same molecule of, cytoch of cytochrome C oxidase binds nitric oxide and it binds oxygen, both of them. If you've got too much nitric oxide, what Bernd is saying, you're going to deprive the mitochondria 
of the oxygen that it needs to be able to make ATP. So you don't want to do that. There's a feedback mechanism that's very sensitive, and you don't want to go in and start doing lots of things in large amounts, or you're going to disturb that feedback mechanism. And it's the problem that I have with nutritional medicine in general. We go in there and we take 10 grams of vitamin C, and then we add our lipoic acid, and then we're taking vitamin D, and then we're taking this and that. And so many patients are coming to me who have a truckload of vitamin pills, and you have to teach them about food. You know, food is kind of balanced. Mother Nature is so amazing in the way she puts things together. So it's important to know all of the effects of what you're doing. Now back to the nitric oxide story. If there's too much you've got a problem, you're going to starve uh, the mitochondria of oxygen and starve you of ATP. And it does stimulate angiogenesis. And that's a problem for cancer. But there's a way of stopping that by using it with antioxidants. So if you practice this thing called nitromedicine, and I'd urge you to go to nitromedicine.com and read about this because it's a, it's a great interesting site. If you give antioxidants with the nitric oxide and you're getting a nice release of, of ATP, you're not going to have the problem of angiogenesis being stimulated because you're going to recycle a lot of the problems that are developed from this whole mechanism uh, back to a more normal place. So there are resources you can read by people who are PhDs, not clinicians, who have all these wonderful theories about uh, how this works. And then you can be the guy that's been on the scene for 16 years doing it in the office and seeing what it does. So I get real leery of whenever we're looking at a narrow area of biochemistry, of cell biochemistry, and saying, Eureka, I found it. Because you may have found something that makes a lot of sense in that local area that doesn't make sense over here. That metabolic pathway chart has got thousands of reactions on it. Not even Byrne knows them all. Oh, well, he's pretty darn close. Okay, he, he, more than anybody I know, maybe he and Dick Cunyon, have pretty much mastered that thing, but I can assure you I haven't, and I can tell you my colleagues haven't. So when we think we've found something, like the solution with methylation, or the solution with eight grams a day of vitamin C, I'm very reluctant to say that we got the answer now because we got all this other stuff going on. So I don't claim to be a high-powered orthomolecular doctor, but I've been practicing here for 25 years, and I know a little bit about it, and I've gone back to the basics, like Byrne has. Diet, what you eat, exercise, stress reduction, sleep, weigh what you should, avoid environmental toxins the best you can, and above all, have a meaningful purpose in your life. Those are the secrets that we've wasted, and those are the things that take us to a place where we enjoy good health. So I'm appreciating the complex biochemistry, and God bless you for all the pioneering work that you're doing in this field. When I, I call him or he calls me, it's two goddamn hours before we've hung up the phone because he's driving my brain nuts with all the things that he, that he knows and I want to know more. But I've almost given up on it because we don't, I, first of all, I can't do it. Thank you for the opportunity, but I can't do what you do because you're a unique, very special guy. And so I've gone more the other way more into the lifestyle stuff and more into why do people get sick? I mean, what's the underlying cause for why people get sick? And for me, it's always a psycho-spiritual issue because I think, the, this sounds crazy to uh, people that are biochemists, but I think there's always a very deep and perfect relationship between spirit and human beings. And that everything that happens to us is for a purpose that's perfect. You get ALS for a reason. You break a bone for a reason. You're in an accident for a reason. And that's supposed to be a lesson to help you to understand what life is about. It's a spiritual lesson that moves you along your spiritual path. So you get some kind of benefit from being here on planet Earth. It's not a fight against disease. Disease is your buddy when you look at it this way because your body is a reflection of what happens 
at the, at the highest level. And so you have the opportunity of being able to have a glimpse of what the universe is trying to tell you. I think even when a titsy fly bites a two-year-old baby and it dies, you can't make any sense out of that. I don't try to, but there's something called trust and faith that's huge that I have faith in, that I've learned to move towards. And to my surprise, the Townsend Letters publishing a paper I just wrote on that hmm. that uh, I would encourage you to see. It's about science, spirituality, and medicine, how they fit together. And I can tell you, it took me four months to write 28 lousy pages, <laughs> rewriting it about 50 times. But it's made a convert out of me, enough so that I'm almost disinterested in the stuff I presented to you tonight and disinterested in orthomolecular and cell biochemistry for me because I think I want to take it to the next level. And it's not like I'm going to ignore it all. Somebody comes to me as a patient and they say, I've got pain, fix me, please. I will pay attention to that and I will help them fix their neuropathy or their back pain or their headaches. And I can do it. I mean, it, and I'm happy to do it. But I don't stop there. You've got to take it to the next level, like Gabby does. Next level. I want to say something about Len uh, and Sherry here. Oh, and I've sent Len, Len a number of patients of mine, and I myself a patient a long time ago. There's very few people like Len in uniqueness, and li he listens to you, but beyond that, his observation of you is beyond anyone I ever met, really. To see the whole spectrum of the person is very rare, and you do that so well. I, I'm telling you. So he's booked solid, I can't tell you. But he listens to you, and he has a great input of you and your environment and who you are. It's rare. And Sherry, I've been her patient, and I've sent a lot. When I come out of there, I'm a totally different person. I'm going to tell you. I feel better. I'm more relaxed. Whatever pain, it's gone. And she spends that quality time that nobody else will do that. There is no doctor out there that spends those kind of time with you and makes you feel that good. And that's why I wanted both of them at the same time here because you don't find those doctors anymore, and they're rare. All right, guys, we need to wrap it up because we got to be out of here by 10. Indeed. So let's thank all the presenters here. Oh, hold on one second. We'll get a report if, if there's any difference here. Yeah, let's get a round of report.